Uh, good morning, my name is Wanda Elliott and I'm a recruiting manager with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Um, we are obviously a rental car company, but Enterprise is much more focused on the home city market. Um, so I'm sure you've seen our commercials, we're much more of that company that goes out and picks customers up and brings them back to the location, people who need um, transportation because their car has been repaired. Um, so that's why we look for that college educated person to come in and run one of our home city branches. Um, the position that we typically hire in for is the entry level sales and management training program. Um, I started in that <coughs> position, all of our upper management, you need to start there, learn the basics of the business and then from there be able to move up into much more of a management level. Um, our location, our administrative office is in Egan, Minnesota. I primarily recruit just for Minnesota, um, but we have locations all over. We also have some international operations as well. Um, as far as our hiring, um, you know, right now we have a, a very good group of individuals that will be starting with us. Uh, we have a, um, about 15 individuals starting with us on Friday, and then we have another 15 to 20 starting with us in June. Um, so after we get those individuals on board, we'll see exactly where we're at for um, our growth and hopefully be able to open up our positions again um, in July. I'm Shelly Chamberlain. I'm with the Minnesota Council of Nonprofits, and I'm the operations manager, so operations and human resources. Um, we're a very small organization. We're about 30 staff, so definitely a lot smaller than <laughs> these two companies. But um, let's see. Uh, we're a, a statewide nonprofit membership association, so we have about 1,900 nonprofit members. Um, and how we serve our members is we produce information in the form of uh, publications, research reports, a report that I'll talk about in just a minute. Um, we uh, convene a lot of events, we do a lot of trainings um, for people looking to brush up their skills or issue briefings, things like that. We do a lot of um, public policy advocacy, so we go to the state legislature and um, we lobby on issues that aff affect the sector more broadly, so usually it's like tax issues, budget issues, um, primarily. Um, we, I should mention this right away, one of our best resources for job seekers is we have an um, online nonprofit job board. So if any of you have been looking in the nonprofit sector, you might have stumbled across that. Um, and I can, if you wanted that address, I have my business cards, you can uh, go to our website. But usually we have anywhere, it used to be about 500 jobs at one time, but now it's more like 350. So we've definitely seen, um, nonprofit sector has seen a big um, impact uh, because of the current economy. Um, in terms of what hiring will be like for the industry as a whole, um, usually we say nonprofits are impacted by um, kind of changes to the economy 18 months after the rest of the uh, sectors because nonprofits are impacted by things like by things like funder payouts. So a lot of um, foundations and grant making organizations, you know, see their endowments go down, but they've made commitments of several years in advance. So they're still paying out past commitments, but probably in the future we'll continue to see things like um, grant dollars and, and certainly have been seeing individual donations go down as well. So as a result, nonprofits are seeing their revenues reduced, but a greater demand for services, which is kind of interesting because we have a lot to do, not a lot to pay. I think what that might mean is there are going to be a lot more part-time jobs and internships available, and I've noticed this on our job board as well, so that might be something to look for. Um, but it's tough. We're seeing a lot of people coming from other sectors wanting to work in the nonprofit sector, um, which is tough if you're just entering the job market and competing with those folks. But um, at the same time, I think it can be good because I think people are afraid to hire people who will leave once the economy gets better. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's a really interesting time for nonprofits. I think if you can be flexible, it can be a good time uh, to get your foot in the door, but you know, a, a full-time paying position can, can be hard to get. So, uh, but there are lots of other kind of options out there. Great, thanks. Are there any questions off the bat that you guys have or topics you want to make sure we address in the next uh, 20 minutes or so? Yes, we are a part of an organization called the National Council of Nonprofits, and there are um, state associations. It changes pretty frequently, but I want to say it's like 30 or so states. Um, there's an organization that formed recently in Wisconsin. There's a, I think a fledgling organization in Iowa, so there's definitely some regional ones. Is there a particular state you were one of? Massachusetts. They, they do. They have a, um, I think it's called the Council of Human Service Providers in Massachusetts. So if you go to the National Council of Nonprofits website, they have a state association directory. And a lot of them provide some more services. Great. I think we had another question back here. Yeah, I was just wondering about following up after applying for jobs, because most of the jobs I've applied for don't have a name or contact information. So 
you still supposed to do that? And if you do, who do you call and what do you say? Great question. Anyone want to start with that? Sure. Uh, I was following up about the contact information. I would say use, use the internet. Try and Google and Google that company and see if you can find uh, a main number <coughs> and then call and ask to speak to human resources or recruiting division. Uh, ask and just mention, you know, I'm following up on an application I submitted on such and such date and I just want to see is what, what is the status of this position? Are you guys still hiring? Um, if you could just let me know. Most often that will get to the appropriate recruiter and they will call you back with a response. Um, I think there, I will say I think following up maybe once or twice after you apply is good. Uh, sometimes you see people following up on a daily basis, sometimes multiple <laughs> times a day. Um, you want to be able to follow up and be persistent, but not, not, ov not overly. So I think it is very good to follow up if you haven't heard a response, I would say within a week to two weeks for sure. And, you know, again, Google, find that name number and ask around and, and you'll eventually get to the appropriate person. Yeah, like for us, we actually have our, our contact information on our website, but for, if we didn't, for example, what I would just recommend for you to do is actually call one of our locations or call a store or whatever company uh, may have some local, regional kind of um, locations and contact them and just say, I'm looking for the HR recruiting department like Jill had mentioned, and um, they should be able to forward you, forward you to the right person. But you have to do that. I mean, it's it's one of those things in this economy, if you can get your name out there more and more, um, you don't want to be too aggressive with it, like she was mentioning, but um, you know, but email or phone call, I think, is definitely appropriate. Mm -hmm. Can either of you offer, any of you two, um, when, when I'm a candidate and I call up to, or I call to follow up, what might be an appropriate question or <coughs> message that I want to connect with the recruiter about? Or what would be something that might stand out when I call you as a candidate and I'm following up on a job? I always like to hear that you've done research on my company, that you know exactly what position you're hiring in, or that we're hiring in for. Um, you know, so I would call up and say, you know, hi, my name is Wanda Elliott. I just completed the application online. Um, you know, I did some research on your company, and I'm very excited about the opportunity that I have to offer. Um, is there a way that I can meet with you? Just be, you know, pretty aggressive with it in the sense that, um, you know, one, is there an opportunity that I, I could come in and talk with somebody? Um, what would you suggest at this point in order for me to maybe learn even more about the company? Um, just to try to get your foot into the door that way. And I, I've noticed, I think, you know, with nonprofits, it kind of depends on the size. So if it's a smaller organization, it may take a while to hear back just because they're so overwhelmed. And, mm -hmm. you know, maybe they've eliminated their HR person because it's not essential. They're not a fundraising person. Mm -hmm. They're not a, you know, program person. Um, and so they're doing more with less. So I think, you know, oftentimes we actually sometimes put no phone calls on our application um, um, postings just because it's so overwhelming. Mm -hmm. and. You know, really, if, if the strength of your application is enough to get you through the interview process, you'll hear from us. So I think that might be typical of, of other organizations. Mm -hmm. 